Breaking news. Putin is supposed to be financially crippled by this oil price cap. However, it has not been extensively tried. This point in time, until now. As part of the sanctions imposed by Western allies in response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, oil prices in Russia have risen well above a price cap. The $60 per barrel price cap imposed by Ukraine's Western allies was largely symbolic for months afterward. Moscow's primary source of revenue, crude oil, typically sells for less than that. The cap was designed to prevent the Kremlin from using any unexpectedly high oil prices to fund its military operation in Ukraine. That time has come, putting the price ceiling to its toughest test to date and revealing its flaws. Since mid July, the price of Russia's benchmark oil, which is often exported on Western ships that are obligated to comply with sanctions, has consistently exceeded the ceiling, adding hundreds of millions of dollars per day to the Kremlin's war chest. Ten months after the price limit was imposed in December, the first signs of enforcement are appearing, with Russia's profits rising, the Israel Hamas war pushing up global oil prices, and evidence that some traders and shippers are evading the cap. However, proponents of sanctions argue that a harsher crackdown is necessary to seriously harm Russia. According to Benjamin Hilgenstock, a senior economist at the Kyiv School of Economics, which advises the Ukrainian government, Declining oil profits are the one thing that hits Russian macroeconomic stability the most. Russia's oil revenue is the country's lifeblood, allowing President Vladimir Putin to fund the military without causing rampant inflation or a currency collapse. Moscow is doing remarkably well in the face of sanctions due to its ability to sell more to the world than it buys. According to the International Monetary Fund, its economy will expand this year while Germany's economy contracts. Russia's primary source of income is still threatened by stricter regulations. Two ship owners were sanctioned by the U.S. Treasury Department last week, and British authorities are currently looking into possible violations. According to a report by a Stanford University-led international working group on sanctions, Russia has lost $100 billion due to sanctions on oil imports since the invasion began in April. However, according to economists, the European Union's ban on Russian oil is largely to blame, as it cut off Moscow's main customer. Hilgenstock admitted, there are serious problems with the price cap policy, but it can work. It has the potential to be very efficient with some adjustments. The Center for Research on Energy and Clean Air in Helsinki said in a report last week that Western-owned or insured vessels persisted in loading Russian oil at all ports within Russia, even as prices rose above the cap. As the author puts it, these occurrences serve as compelling evidence of violations against the price cap policy. According to the think tank, Russia's daily oil income increased to around 200 million euros, $211 million, in September as global prices rose. S&P Global Platts reported that prices for Moscow's key export-grade crude hit $74.46 per barrel last week due to reduced supply as a result of production cuts in Saudi Arabia and Russia. Since July 11th it has been above $60. The goal of the price floor is to prevent Russia from making too much money and therefore removing its supplies from the market. Doing so poses the risk of a shortage, which could increase fuel prices and inflation in the United States and Europe. It is predicated on the widespread presence of European and G7-based ship owners, traders, and insurers, which is essential given the industry-wide price cap. That makes it possible to impose sanctions on those businesses. Knowing the cost of Russian oil is essential for compliance by shipping companies. Good faith disclosure need only be made on a single page document listing the parties and the cap price. There is no requirement to disclose the actual sales contracts. Analysts say this has made the market more susceptible to dishonesty from vendors, while also allowing some shippers to turn a blind eye. Oil from the Russian port of Cosmino on the Pacific Ocean, which is responsible for a relatively small share of Russia's exports, raised suspicions among analysts because it was trading well above the cap. Although many of the tankers docking there were owned by Westerners, especially the Greeks, this was the case.
Until last week, when the United States Treasury Department barred a tanker owner in the United Arab Emirates and another in Turkey from doing business in the United States, enforcement action was scarce. They've been accused of relying on U.S. based service providers while transporting Russian oil at $75 and $80 per barrel. A senior Treasury official told reporters last week that the United States has warned insurance companies to avoid vessels that look suspicious. The agency also suggested looking closely at transportation expenses for signs of fraud. Britain's Treasury has stated that it is actively undertaking a number of investigations into suspected breaches of the oil price cap. Another way around the ceiling is that the price is established when oil leaves Russia, rather than at a specific point in time later, such as when it is purchased by an Indian refinery. Russian affiliated trading companies in non sanctioning countries may buy and resell the oil multiple times.